Now we will continue with metaphase 1. What we have seen uh, in prophase 1, 5 subphases, the chromosomes gradually condensed, homologous chromosomes they pair and then there is vertical splitting which takes place of the chromatids and exchange of genetic material takes place between the non-sister chromatids. After this exchange has taken place, then terminalization takes place. And at the end, everything, whatever is happening in normal prophase, all those changes also take place. So after prophase 1, the cell enters into metaphase 1. So what all changes would take place in a cell which is undergoing metaphase 1? Nuclear membrane has already disappeared by the end of prophase 1. That was it. Uh, the last stage that is dikinesis. Now, the spindle fibers are already formed and the chromosomes, they get aligned on the equatorial plane. But here, the chromosomes which come here are in homologous pairs. So what we have to say is that homologous pair of chromosomes gets aligned on the equatorial plane. The centrioles are at two ends and we start seeing these fibers already. These aster rays are already formed. Spindle fibers are all, also there. So let us draw a few spindle fibers here. And what is seen in this case? Homologous chromosomes. I'm going to draw the chromosome separately here. This was one chromosome and here we had shown the exchanged genetic material and its homolog. This was another chromosome and we had shown this as solid. So after exchange of genetic material, we showed these two parts exchanged. But as we said in the beginning that each chromosome is having double DNA. So now what we are going to show is we will draw the same thing with a slight difference that we will show these two arms here and these two arms here and the same case is going to be here. Now these chromosomes they are on the equatorial plane and we started with four chromosomes that means there are two pairs of homologous chromosomes. This is one, this is the other pair. That means, not the pair, the other of the homologous pair. So let us show this as solid. And here in this one, only this much part exchanged. So one homologous pair is on the equatorial plane. And as we can see very clearly, that only this spindle fiber is attached to the kinetochore, one kinetochore. So spindle fiber is going to be here and here. So this spindle fiber is attached to the kinetochore, which is the same kinetochore for the two arms of the chromosome. And this one also is attached here. Let us draw one more pair of chromosome. Again, showing them like this with little exchange genetic material and this one again with this much part of exchange genetic material and the other is completely solid. Spindle fibers are attached here to the kinetochore and this one. So again we are seeing all types of uh, spindle fibers. This is the continuous because it is running from one pole to the other one. So this is continuous spindle fiber. This one which is attached to the kinetochore is the chromosomal spindle fiber or we can also call it discontinuous fiber. These are continuous which are going from one pole to the other. Now, what has happened in metaphase 1? In metaphase, chromosomes align on the equatorial plane. But in metaphase 1, that is we are talking of prophase 1, the chromosomes have aligned on the equatorial plane, but instead of single chromosome, it is the homologous pair which has aligned on 
the equatorial plane. Now the cell enters the next stage. So main thing which has happened here, the changes which take place in metaphase 1 is chromosomes, homologous pair. Align on the equatorial plane. So this is the arrangement. Now the cell enters into the next stage that is anaphase 1. So let us draw a cell which is in anaphase 1. In anaphase, the spindle fibers, they start to contract. So here we will draw those two centrioles and the aster rays, the smaller fibers, same here and the spindle fiber. There are some continuous fibers and these were the ones which were attached to the chromosomes. Now when these fibers, the chromosomal fiber, this moves towards this side and this is going to move towards the other pole. So when these fibers, they move, the chromosome pair, this, the pair separates. That means out of the pair, one chromosome goes towards one pole and the other chromosome is going to go towards the other pole. So here, let us show this chromosome moving. So this chromosome with its two arms and this exchanged genetic material starts to move towards one pole and the other chromosome again with the double DNA and this much exchange part is moving towards the other pole. One chromosome again with its two arms that is chromatids and the exchange genetic material is moving towards one pole and the other chromosome with its two arms and this exchange material is moving towards the opposite pole. Now we have shown the darker chromosomes on one side and the lighter chromosomes on the other side. It can happen in a reverse manner also. It totally depends that how has the pair aligned on the equatorial plane. For example, if the darker one, say this was the darker one and this is the lighter. If they align like this, the lighter is going to move up and the darker is going to go down. In the other case, it could be reversed like this. So it is not fixed that both the darker are going to go towards one side. It can go in combinations also. So now the fibers have contracted and these chromosomes, they have started moving towards the opposite pole. That means the chromosome number is now getting reduced to half. There were four chromosomes, two pairs aligned on the equatorial plane. Now two chromosomes are going here and two here. So when this forms one nucleus and here one other nucleus is formed, the number of chromosomes would be reduced to half. Well, let me write the stage. This is anaphase 1. In anaphase 1, this is what is happening. The uh, chromosomal spindle fibers are contracting. And we don't see any fiber appearing in between these two chromosomes as we saw in case of anaphase of mitosis. If you are able to remember in anaphase of mitosis it is one chromosome that means we made it like this and they are connected with the same kinetochore, core and this kinetochore core splits to separate the two chromosomes and that is when the fiber appears in between these two uh, chromatid, sorry, the centromeres which have undergone splitting and that fiber was called interzonal fiber. Here, the chromosomes are separating as individual chromosome. There is no splitting of centromere. So, again, let me just go over this. If this is the chromosome, which has aligned on the equatorial plane. And if the spindle fibers attaches to the kinetochore, one kinetochore of the two arms, and then it is going to split like this. Whenever this splits, then one chromosome is going to go towards one pole and other will move towards the other pole. And a fiber is going to appear between the two. 
This happens in mitosis where splitting of centromere takes place. So interzonal fiber appears only when the centromere, this part, has undergone splitting. Here, in this case, what we saw, one chromosome has its own kinetochore. On the contrary, there are two arms sharing this kinetochore. If this chromosome splits, then we will have the interzonal fibers. So here, the chromosomes have separated. So how do we write this? Chromosomes of the pair separate, but there is no splitting of centromere. No splitting of centromere. And that is why there is no interzonal fiber formation. This we have to remember because many a times questions are asked that in which stage would we see interzonal fibers. Interzonal fibers appear only when the centromere split and centromere are splitting in mitosis and they would split in meiosis too also. We'll see that. Here there is no splitting and that is why there is no interzonal fiber in this case. We can draw early anaphase and late anaphase. Early anaphase is like this. By late anaphase, these chromosomes would have reached up to these poles. So now the chromosomes are reached or they have reached up to the poles. Now this cell is going to enter the next phase that is telophase 1. This is again the meiosis part 1 which we are talking of. After anaphase, the cell gets into telophase. And we will call it telophase 1. In telophase 1, the changes which are going to take place are exactly same as telophase of mitosis. But, or in other words, we say that whatever happens in telophase 1 is reverse of prophase. But here, in meiosis 1, when we saw this prophase, we saw leptotene, zygotein and all those stages. So what is going to happen in telophase 1 is same as what happened in the last stage of prophase 1. When nuclear membrane dissociates and disappears, nucleolus dissociates and disappears, here it is going to reappear. But the nuclear membrane is going to reappear around the chromosomes. So there is one centriole here, the other centriole at the other pole. Spindle fibers, asterase, the dissociate. So now we won't draw that. There are two chromosomes which have reached towards the upper end and now they have become a little thinner as compared to this structure. Two chromosomes have reached towards this end and again they have become a little thinner because in Prophase, chromatin fibers condense. Here, chromosomes decondense. And around these chromosomes, the nuclear membrane reappears. So, the changes that we see here, nuclear membrane reappears. Nucleolus, we have not drawn it, but it is going to reappear. And other membrane structures, they would also reappear. Spindle fibers have gone, they have disappeared. And by the end of this, we start showing telophase also. Actually, it starts somewhere by end of anaphase. So here we would show a little constriction in the plasma membrane, which is an indication that cytokinesis 1 has also begun. So in telophase 1, what all things have happened? Nuclear membrane. appears, chromosomes decondense and spindle fibers or spindles disappear. So these are the changes and cytokinesis has, has already begun 
it starts by the end of anaphase or by the beginning of telophase itself. So by telophase 1, there are two nuclei which are formed. That means karyokinesis 1 is complete and each nucleus has only two chromosomes. We started with four. They are, there are only two. Again, each chromosome, though we are drawing it as like thread, but each chromosome is having double DNA. So there are two arms which we can show here so that we remember that each chromosome is bringing the double DNA. After this, the cell will undergo cytokinesis 1 to form two daughter cells and then these two daughter cells will enter meiosis 2. So in the next segment, we will see what changes take place after this.